Hey guys, I'd like to give a shout out to our newest Patreon fan club member, Kevin Himmelspach in North Dakota. Kevin is now a premium listener and will enjoy our full benefits package. Thanks for supporting the show. If you want your very own shout out and other great benefits, you can get in our Patreon fan club by visiting disturbedpodcast.com slash fan club. Secondly, this episode features a couple new guest narrators I'm really excited for you guys to hear, as well as returning narrator Alexandria Tucker. So with that, let's get into the episode. This episode contains real experiences shared through Reddit. Listener discretion is advised. This first story is a real Reddit submission by user FossilFool12, with narration by Alexandria Tucker. Her YouTube channel is linked in the show notes. Make sure you check it out. This happened about a year ago. There were so many terrible factors working against me that night, I'm astounded I got away unscathed, at least physically. This all begins when I'm at my friend's apartment, who lives in a really rough part of town. In a series of poor decisions that night, I decide to get belligerently drunk and take a few pills of God knows what. I know, I know. Safe to say, after a solid night of partying, around 4am, I was not in the right state of mind. My drug-addled brain decides that instead of staying the night at my friend's apartment like I normally would, I wanted to Uber back to my own apartment. My friend's apartment had two separate entrances and exits to the building, one in the back, unlit parking lot of the building, and one facing the street. They had two sets of keys for each door, and I only had keys to the one in the back of the apartment. Since my Uber would obviously arrive at the street, and the door to the front of the building locks itself behind you, I exited this way when the driver was soon to arrive. Looking back, standing outside that apartment, I realized I looked like the easiest target on the planet. I'm a small petite female in my early 20s, and I can hardly stay upright. I'm using a street lamp to prop myself up and not doing a good job at that either. The light was basically a beacon for any nearby predators saying, come get me, I'm not paying attention to my surroundings at all in this state, despite the fact that there was literally a bullet hole in the front door I just came out of not good. I remember checking to see what car I was getting picked up in, and I was only able to pick out the fact that it was a black sedan. Soon after stepping outside, a black sedan pulls up to the curb and starts rolling down the window, so I stepped forward. Before this man even spoke, I could feel something was wrong. He had an expression like he was tearing me apart with just his eyes. After seeing that look, it gave me a new meaning to the word predator to describe a criminal, because I then knew what it felt like to be prey. He basically barks at me, I'm your Uber driver. This was the second red flag that somehow made its way through my brain. Normally, Uber drivers just roll down the window and say, Fossil Fuel 12, or any version of that, but always including your name. I think I just stared at him for a second, my brain slowly piecing together the situation I was potentially in, and I ask him, what's my name? He immediately is enraged and starts screaming about how he doesn't have fucking time for this and just get in the fucking car, etc, etc, etc. I don't think I've ever sobered up so fast in my life. I'm completely panicking. Obviously, this wasn't my Uber. Quickly checking the license plate, I immediately see it's not a match. Meanwhile, this guy is still screaming at me and I have absolutely no idea what to do. If I bolt in either direction, this guy could easily outrun me or have a weapon. I'm also pretty sure at this point that if he's trying to nab a random girl off the street, he must have a weapon of some sort. I can't run back into the apartment door right behind me since it locks behind you, and I don't have keys, nor the time, to unlock it. Running towards the back door would do nothing as well, as he's idling right by the mouth of the driveway towards the back parking lot, and again, I would have to take the time to find the right keys and get in. If I screamed, I'm not exactly in the type of neighborhood where someone would try to be a vigilante, and I can still hear the music radiating from my friend's third-floor apartment. I knew they wouldn't hear me. 
It's 4 a.m. and absolutely no one is around. People talk a lot about how they either sprint into action or freeze, but I felt incapable of doing either. It was the absolute worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. Everything in me wanted to run, but I felt that if I did that, it would be the end of me. If I kept standing there, staring in shock at this screaming man, the result would be the same. From when he started screaming at me to this point, I'm guessing only 20 seconds has passed by. Just as he's looking like he's ready to get out of the car, another black sedan pulls up right behind him. Checking the license plate as quickly as I can, I realize it's my actual Uber and make a full sprint to the car, really only like six steps, and throw myself in, screaming at my real Uber driver, What's my name? The poor dude looks terrified but responds with my name quickly, to which I reply, Get me the fuck out of here, that man is trying to kidnap me! If I was in this Uber driver's position, I think I would be too shocked to react as quickly as he did. My dude flew out of there, offered to call the cops for me, which I declined and now regret, and then walked me to the front door of my apartment, ensuring I got inside safely. Truly an incredible human being. You can rest easy knowing he got the fattest tip my college student bank account would allow for, although he deserved much, much more. So, to the man who ruined my sense of security and caused countless anxiety attacks when out in public for months, let's not meet. P.S. Although it took a while, I'm doing great now. Stay safe, y'all. This next story comes from the YouTube channel of new guest narrator Jensen. You can find the link to his YouTube channel in the show notes. Make sure you check it out. I'm writing this today not for myself, but for others to hopefully shed some light on what's been going on. Recently, my family has been getting harassed by something at night. We have called the cops already to check out what it might be, but we live far away from the nearest station. They don't always get here until hours after what has happened. It started a few weeks back. We live in a farm that my family has had for years, and where we make our living from. It was late at night when my brother called out to me saying he heard someone or something out by the field where we keep the cattle. And by this time, we had made it out there. One of the newborns had been torn to shreds. Even the morning when we went back out, we couldn't find the head or one of the legs. There was no drag marks or anything. The strangest part is that there wasn't even much blood besides what was on the cow itself. A few days later, the same thing happened again but it's one of the bulls. Now, this bull must have been at least 1,500 pounds and was already fully grown. My dad found just its lower half outside the field where they stay and long gashes in its body. We had already made a police report before and when we called again, they didn't have any answers other than we should set up some cameras on the property. Now, this property stretches over 80 acres, 15 of which we actually use and there's no way we could really set up cameras here. We did end up getting some more guns though. Now, this just happened last night, and I'm scared of whatever it is, it wants more than just cattle. I was outside doing some chores and getting all of our livestock fed. It was around 6 p.m. by this point, and I was already on high alert due to everything. I was walking to the stables when I heard my brother saying my name. I called out to him saying just in a bit, and that I was almost done with what I was doing. As I walked to the stables, I saw my brother, and had to do a double take to where I just heard his voice. I asked him how he did that, and he didn't know what I was talking about. When I told him that he was just calling my name, he swore up and down that he didn't. We looked at the field and saw something that we don't usually have out here. It was a large dog, or possibly a wolf. It had to have been the biggest goddamn dog if it was one though. But what was even stranger was how it walked. It would walk like a dog for a bit, but would stand on its back feet. Now keep in mind we're at least 200 feet away from this thing, and it was a good distance from where we kept the cattle. I went to the second story of the stable and looked out to get a better view. That's when this damn thing started running like a bat out of hell, but not on all fours. It was straight up running like a man, and towards the cattle. I jumped back for a second and had to compose myself. 
I'm not ashamed to say I pissed myself a little when I saw this. Looking back, it jumped over the fence that stood at least six feet. In one motion, he grabbed one of the cows and jumped over the fence with this 1,000 pound creature over its shoulder, making it look like it was nothing. We hurried back to the house and told my parents what we had just seen. A little bit later, once it was nighttime, we were all just getting ready for bed when I heard it. A loud knocking noise outside my window, and then a slight tapping sound. This went on for about three minutes. I was so struck with fear that I couldn't move. Then I saw its head slowly appear from the window. Uh, keep in mind that this window sits high, and the foundation of my house is also high. Whatever it was, it must have been nine or ten feet tall, or it was standing on something. I could see its breath hitting the window, fogging it up, and its black hands tapping on the window and outside wall. I remember it went on like this for a bit until it stopped, and I made a beeline for my mom and dad's room. That was on the other side of the house. This thing must have seen me because when I went out of the room and looked back, it was gone. As I ran across the house, I could see a shadow outside passing the windows and following me. I didn't even knock on the door, just went right in. And I think I scared them more than I was. After telling them what I had just seen, my dad decided to phone the police again. And we waited. They showed up after a very long time though, but couldn't find anything. There were scratch marks outside of the window that was on the side of the house. I still don't know what happened or what the hell that thing was, but I'm writing this now and I just want answers as to what we need to do. Support for this episode comes from Audible. You guys already love podcasts, so I'd be willing to bet you'll love Audible too. They have the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. I just finished The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. It's the shocking true story of serial killer Ted Bundy. And this is an excellent follow-up to our very first episode with Kathy Kleiner. I binge this whole book in probably three days. They have all your favorite genres, bestsellers, mysteries, dramas, and everything in between. The best part of Audible for me is you can listen on the go, wherever you are. Whether you're driving or working out, whatever it may be, this is a game changer. Audible members get to choose one audiobook every month, regardless of price, as well as two Audible originals you can't get anywhere else. You can enjoy easy audiobook exchanges, rollover credits, and an audiobook library you keep forever, and you can access anytime, anywhere. You can get started with a 30-day free trial and you'll get your first audiobook as well as two Audible originals completely free by visiting audibletrial.com slash disturbed. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash disturbed. This story is a real Reddit submission by user 2 plus 2 equals Jessica featuring new guest narrator Addison Peacock. You may recognize her from the No Sleep Podcast. Three years ago, I was living with my then-boyfriend in a one-bedroom apartment in a little mountain town. It was a half-basement unit so the bottom of all our windows were level with the ground outside. It was also an older apartment, and not all the windows could fully lock. One day, my boyfriend comes home from work while I'm laying on the sofa and immediately runs up to the window near me and looks out of it frantically. He then goes to look out every other window in the house, then walks around the outside looking in the windows. When he comes back from this confusing exploit, I ask him, WTF is going on and why he's being a spaz. I think I just walked up on a dude looking in the window at you. He took off as I walked up, he tells me. This was naturally very unsettling. But after discussing it and considering the time of day, it was about 2 p.m., and the number of people out and about around the complex at that time, we came to the conclusion that it was just a curious neighbor or someone passing by happening to glance in. 
With that, we forgot about it. If only that was the end. For the next couple of months, odd stuff happened here and there. Someone would knock on the door occasionally, then when I went to answer, no one was there. I'd find things in my apartment that I wasn't familiar with, or things like clothing items would vanish. I didn't really think twice about any of it until one night. My boyfriend and I were arguing around one or two in the morning, and we were being a little loud. We were standing in the kitchen face to face. His back was to an open window with the blinds up halfway, and I was facing it. Amidst our arguing, I glanced behind him at the window, thinking I saw the reflection of my face in it. The window was open. It wasn't my face. There was a man with his face pressed almost against the window screen, watching us. Given the fact that we were arguing and it was late, I thought for a moment it might have been a concerned neighbor walking up to the window to speak to us. A main walkway for the complex was right on the other side of the window. So, I spoke to him. Hello? Can I help you? I asked a little aggressively, thinking a neighbor was intruding on our privacy. He responded to this by staring, unwavering and cold, right at me. His face did not change expression. He did not blink or move. Just looked right at me in a way I have never been looked at before or since. In this instant, I also realized that because of the window being level with the ground, the only way this man's face could be where it was was if he was laying on the ground outside the apartment or crouched and contorted to look into the window. My heart sank. I buried my face in my boyfriend's chest and closed my eyes in fear. My boyfriend up to this point thought I was messing with him. When I buried my face in his chest, only then did he say, Is there really someone at the window? I whispered yes to him. He felt my fear and took a moment before he turned around. By the time he did, the man was gone. It was at this point I started to think about all the little odd occurrences that I'd been experiencing. I assumed the worst. I filed a police report with his description, and my brother loaded my apartment up with weapons to protect me, or at least inform this peeping Tom that I was armed. After that night, myself, my boyfriend, and my brother were on high alert. There were a couple times when my brother came over that he saw a sketchy dude hanging around, and even one time he saw him at my window. He tried to follow him discreetly, but the guy took off running as soon as my brother stepped in his direction. The last night I had my experience with this man, I was sitting home alone on my sofa. My boyfriend was at work at a restaurant about two blocks away. He had picked me up from work an hour earlier, We had sat on the sofa together a little while when we got home, and he kissed me and left for work, locking the door behind him. After he left, I continued to sit on the couch on Reddit for a while in silence. After about an hour of me sitting there in silence, I heard a door creak open. It's a small apartment, so to see the bedroom and bathroom doors from the couch, all I had to do was lean a little to the left. I assumed it was one of my cats coming out of the bedroom, so you can imagine my shock when I lean over and see the door that's opening is the door to the water heater closet slash small storage space. I look to my right and see both my cats sleeping soundly at the other end of the couch. I look back to the door and it's still creaking open very slowly. It opens enough for me to see it. A set of fingers wrapped around the door, easing the door ever so gently to open it as quietly as possible. That was going to be a no from me, dog. I ran my ass barefooted out the door, into the snow, and down the street to my boyfriend's work. I called the cops. When everyone was back to check out the apartment, he was, of course, gone. 
After that, my boyfriend and I packed our shit, went to stay with my parents, and six months later moved 1,000 miles away from that town. That was the end of it. I initially found this sub around that time as I was trying to find other stories similar to mine or people to talk to who had experienced something like I did. I had intended to write my story here eventually, and I figured after this week's events, I had to. I live a thousand miles away from where all of this happened, so a part of me thinks there's no way this person could have found me. But last week, I heard a knock on the front door of my apartment. I was expecting a package, so I figured it was a delivery driver and didn't answer. I'd go get the package later. Then they knocked again. And again. The third one made me feel uneasy, so I waited a good 20 minutes to check the door. When I did, there was no package, no note, no nothing. Someone was just knocking. Although it made me uneasy, I didn't initially think back to my stressful experience in my last town. Then, two days ago, I went out to get groceries. I have a little patio, and I go out there in the mornings to just chill or check on plants a lot, and I've been known to leave it unlocked in the day on accident. Never thought of it as a huge deal. Until I came home from the store two days ago, and the deadbolt to my apartment was locked. The deadbolt that can only be locked from inside of the apartment. Period. I assumed someone robbed me because I dumbly left my patio unlocked. I called my sister. I called my current new boyfriend. I waited for people to be with me, and I went into my apartment through the sliding glass patio door. Nothing was out of place. Nothing of value was taken. At this point, my heart sank. Nothing was touched. Nothing stolen. Someone was inside my apartment just because they wanted to be inside of my apartment. I told my boyfriend about my stalker, and he's not taking this shit lightly like my past boyfriend. I filed a police report. We checked for recording devices and cameras. He put Nest cameras up all over the place, and we're on high, high alert. I really, truly hope this is a coincidence. But if this man really followed me across multiple state lines, there's no one on this earth I'm less interested in meeting. This episode is made possible by Supporty. Are you struggling to stay motivated to the goals you've set for yourself? Maybe you're trying to wake up earlier, but you keep hitting that snooze button. Or maybe you're trying to cut back on sweets, but you find yourself opening the fridge when you're stressed out. Well, one of the best ways to make lasting behavioral changes is by an accountability partner who will help you stick to positive daily actions. So how do you find a reliable accountability partner who is going to engage with you and keep you honest? Supporty is a mobile app that matches you with accountability buddies for a week at a time. Supporty pairs you and a buddy up one-on-one. -on -one. That's for maximum accountability. Plus, it's mutual, so you encourage your buddy and they encourage you each day of your seven-day session. What's really cool is you can see whether your partner accomplished their daily actions and they can see whether you've done yours too. If you want a more effective way to stay motivated, experience the difference of an accountability partner. Download Supporty, that's support with an I at the end, from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store, and make sure you choose Disturbed Podcast when you create your account to start your two-week free trial. You can check out the show notes of this episode for more details. Get encouragement, get motivated, and achieve more with Supporty. Next up is a real Reddit submission by user Peaky Lou, with narration by Alexandria Tucker.
Although this happened back in December 2019, I still think about it on a daily basis because it was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. I hope it offers some sort of enlightenment on what to do or not to do if you find yourself in a similar situation. Back in early December, I had ventured out to do a bit of late night shopping. I'm a 31 year old stay at home mother of two young children. So once my husband gets home from work, I like to take some time to myself and go shopping, take a drive or run errands, kid free. It was around 8.30 p.m. when I arrived at the Target I frequent. I'm by no means a paranoid or anxious individual, but I have attended several seminars in college on human trafficking and have done plenty of research on my own learning to identify red flags and what precautions to take when out in public alone, especially at night. I carry several self-defense items on my person at all times, a car baton, a self-defense keychain, an alarm, and a universal handcuff key just in case. I parked directly in front of the store next to a cart caddy and took a mental note of the vehicles parked nearby, again, just as a precaution. I was taught at an early age to always be observant of your surroundings, and being a control freak just naturally makes you that way. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary that night, and the parking lot was actually quite empty, most likely because it was a weekday. As I entered the store, I began browsing like usual, following the natural flow of the store departments, following the main aisle around. I had been browsing for only 10 to 15 minutes when I noticed a young gentleman, mid-twenties. He was tall, skinny, dressed in a dirty gray two-piece sweatsuit and brown work boots. He looked over at me. I smiled and said hello, but his facial expression was blank. He looked like he may have been high on something by the looks of his eyes, but he didn't seem to care for my gesture and he quickly moved on. At first glance, there was nothing in particular that alarmed me about him, except that I took notice at the fact that he was just wandering down the main aisle with no cart or basket, hands in his pockets, and didn't seem to be with anyone. I continued shopping with no second thoughts and made my way to the next apartment. Several minutes had passed and that's when I noticed a second young gentleman, wearing the same gray sweatsuit, a similar pair of work boots, again no cart, no basket. He too glanced at me, then quickly darted his eyes away when he realized I was looking directly at him. I became a bit more alerted but still remained composed and continued on browsing. Another 15 minutes or so passed and that's when a third older man caught my attention. And you guessed it, same gray sweatsuit and work boots with no cart, no basket, just his hands in his pockets. I assumed they were in some sort of work uniform, maybe construction workers, but why weren't they walking around together and why didn't they have any items to purchase? At this point, it was difficult to focus on browsing, I had a bad feeling about these three men, and it became clear that something was a bit off. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I felt as if I was being monitored by the three of them, as if they were all communicating my whereabouts as I continued to make my way through the store, because each department I entered, it didn't take long for me to notice one of the three men pass by whatever side aisle I happened to be in, making their presence known to me. I stayed completely vigilant while trying not to panic or allow my suspicions to overwhelm me. Something about their presence felt very heavy and dark, so I decided to test their intentions to prove I wasn't overthinking the situation and my bad gut feeling was valid. I began picking random aisles and traveling back and forth between departments in a very unorganized and random fashion to see if the men would continue to pass by me as frequently as they had been. With every aisle I popped into, it was just a few minutes later one of them would make an appearance, staring me down as they passed by. It felt as if I was being surrounded like a wild animal, hunted even. They were no longer trying to be conspicuous, which was the scariest part of it all, and everything instinctual was screaming at me to get out of there. I gripped my cart so tightly and figured if they got too close I could use the cart to push them away, or at least create distance between us. By this point, I'd been shopping for about an hour altogether, maybe a bit over, and I was ready to purchase my items, but honestly, I felt too uncomfortable to continue browsing even if I wanted to. The men had been following me all that time, and I was becoming more annoyed, if anything. The store was pretty empty around this time, one of the main reasons I like shopping at night, but that made this particular situation even more unsettling. Two preteen girls were wandering around by themselves, which quickly caught my attention because the men had bypassed them, making similar advances, but the girls were seemingly oblivious, so I quietly got their attention and asked them to go find their parents and stay with them trying not to freak them out. The mother in me was in full-on protection mode. 
I couldn't imagine having my young children with me on this night. Thank God they were home safe and sound. As I made my way to the checkout, I noticed one of the men coming up from behind me, walking at a quicker pace this time, so I immediately stopped and turned to lock eyes with him as he approached. I will never forget the darkness in his eyes. An eerie smirk formed on his face as he nudged my shoulder, continuing to stare me down, walking backwards to hold his sinister gaze as he exited out the store. I'd lost sight of the other two men, and I hated the uncertainty of it all. He made his message clear in that very moment. My stomach dropped and my entire body began to shake. It was a feeling that I hadn't felt since I was a kid getting lost in a supermarket. A feeling of desperation. I quickly walked to the checkout, discreetly asked the cashier if I could speak to a manager, and told them what had transpired over the last hour, politely asking for a male employee to walk me to my car and for them to alert their security team members. When I told the manager what happened, her face sunk, as if she had already known about these men, and once I described them, she confirmed that she knew who I was talking about. She expressed that several of the female employees had found the men unsettling in the past, and reassured me that someone would escort me to my car. She made a report about the incident and said she would alert the authorities. I was still shaking, but felt relieved that she believed me and showed concern for the other young female patrons in the store. She took my information, then a young male employee walked me out to my car. What I saw as I exited the store made me so sick to my stomach, solidifying all my suspicions. A white, windowless van was parked in the lot, directly behind my car, about a three-parking space distance between us. One of the men seated in the driver's seat and the other two leaning against the side of the van, facing my car, attempting to hide out of view. I mean, how cliche and obvious can you be? Your license plate might as well read Lady Snatchers at that point. Whatever their intent, it didn't seem pure. I pointed them out to the male employee and said, there they are, which then prompted the men to scurry into the van and speed out of the parking lot without hesitation. I truly don't know what would have happened if I walked out to my car alone. I am so freaking grateful I made it home safe and sound and lived to tell my story. Over the following week, I had heard there were several abduction attempts in the shopping center parallel to that target, and I am almost certain it was the same individuals. To the three matching sweatsuit creeps, let's not ever meet again. Our final story in this episode is a real Reddit submission by user The Real Adorkable, with narration by yours truly. I lived on the coast of Washington for a few years in a small town called Ravensdale. Surrounding that area are a couple of larger towns, Maple Valley, Covington, and a couple smallish ones, Enumclaw and Buckley. There are some beautiful scenic back roads between all of these, and I used to spend hours exploring all the different routes I could find. One of the back roads, though, was part of my main route to work in Auburn. I'd take some back roads to go through Ravensdale to Maple Valley, then hop on Highway 18 and take it to Auburn. This happened to me on this section of back road, before you hit the main stretch towards Covington and Maple Valley area. The road winds a bit, but not bad. Gentle, back and forth, left and right, until you hit a straighter stretch. At the end of that straight stretch, it curves sharply to the right, then continues with the gentle left and right curves until you hit the intersection to the main road. I've driven that road so many times, it's muscle memory by now. I was heading to work one morning, and had gotten to the straight stretch. It was midsummer, so it was already full daylight, and it was a beautiful, nearly cloudless day, which doesn't always happen in that area. I was well rested, had coffee with me, and was listening to some upbeat music. I'm driving along when I suddenly feel… something. I don't know how to describe the sensation, but I'll do my best. It was like, out of nowhere, my stomach tightened so hard I could feel my tongue in the back of my throat. Every hair on my neck and arms shot up. I felt very cold, but not like the, it's cold outside kind of cold. 
It was more like the cold when you feel like you're freezing, even though you're running a bad fever. My hands gripped the steering wheel really hard, like white knuckle hard, and it felt like my arms locked up at the joints. All of these sensations hit me at the same time. Then a thought struck me. I've driven this road a thousand times. If you've been on the coast, you know that you have to time your work commute perfectly. Otherwise, you'd be caught up in the horrible morning traffic jams. I left for work at the same time every day, and the drive took the same amount of time every day. I knew for a fact that I should have made it to the sharp right turn by now. It should only have been a second or two away, but there was nothing but straight road ahead of me. In that area where there's not a paved road, it's just thick, thick pine trees. You can clearly see where the trees part to make way for the road. It's a very noticeable gap. I could see the parting in the trees where the road in front of me just continued straight. The sharp right turn appeared to be about a quarter mile down the road. Another thought popped in my head. And it was like my voice. But not my voice. Like it was in my voice, in my head, but an imposter. It said, I should just keep driving. It'll be okay. Something about that creeped me the fuck out because that, that wasn't me thinking that. I honestly don't know how else to say it. It's like something tried to use my own internal monologue to override my actions, to convince me that I was safe. In that moment, I kind of panicked and snapped to action, I guess. Without thinking, I immediately jerked the wheel to the right, even though it looked like the turn was still a good 300 yards away. As I yanked the wheel over, heading right, I kept looking to my left because my eyesight swore the road stayed straight, even though my instincts screamed otherwise. I was right. The turn wasn't 300 yards away. It was right where I freaked out and jerked the wheel. If I hadn't made that snap decision, I would have plowed through nothing but a small forest of thick, tall pine trees at 60 miles an hour. I would have been dead. One last thing about this story in particular, I forgot to mention. This post on Reddit had a link attached. A link to a story of a separate incident posted by a different user two days prior. And the title of that post? Quote, An unseen force may have tried to lure me off the road to my death by altering reality. And that original story took place in Pennsylvania all the way across the country. Stay safe out there, y'all. You've been listening to Disturbed. Special thanks to all the contributing narrators and submitters of these stories. You'll find all the relevant links in the show notes. You can see more info on our website, disturbedpodcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode, help us grow by sharing the show with a friend. And make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening so you always get the newest episodes automatically. You can support the show over at our Patreon fan club and get tons of perks. You can learn more at disturbedpodcast.com slash fan club. If you have your own disturbing experience you want to share for the podcast, leave us a voicemail through our hotline at 701-712-8008. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at Disturbed Podcast and on Twitter at Disturbed underscore pod to stay up to date with all the latest Disturbed news. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And stay safe out there, y'all.